Here are the original Indiana Jones posters. And I used Photoshop, Blender, and a few other tricks to turn them into a Lego style. Now, it may sound a little complicated, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. And we're going to be making the poster for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So the first thing we're going to need to do is find the poster that we want to change into our Lego style. Um, so I'm going with this one. I believe this was the first poster that Disney released for the movie. Um, the first theatrical poster that is. Um, and I just like the look of it. I think it's a really cool art style. Um, speaking of which I should mention now, obviously I don't take credit for any of the art. Um, that was used in the original posters. Um, I'm just kind of changing it and applying it to something that I thought would be a cool idea. Um, but I figured I'd get that out of the way. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we need to remove the characters. So I'm gonna use a simple lasso mask and we're just gonna use content aware fill. Now this does a pretty good job, um, but you're really gonna have to go back and kind of fix some things up because it isn't perfect but it'll get you 75% of the way there. So I went through and I removed all of the characters and I finished up the background. And now we're pretty good. We're almost ready. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning off camera, but let's go ahead and move on over to Blender. So we got Blender open and now we're just gonna remove all these uh, basic parts that come up whenever you open Blender. And I'm just gonna add a camera and I'm gonna make its dimensions the exact same as my poster image. Now this is going to be really important because it allows us to import our poster as a background um, and use it to help organize and pose all of our figures. So I'm gonna start off by importing Indy here. Um, I designed all of the characters with Mecha Bricks. Um, about 90% of them were all just original uh, parts that already existed, um, but the only ones that I made custom parts for were Indy and Voller because they're the most prominent. Now, as you can see there, I actually used two hat hair pieces to get his gray hair. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go through and pose all the characters, um, and I'll just let you go ahead with this time lapse, and I'll come back when I'm all done with that, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got all our characters pretty much posed, and what I'm going to do now is get an HDRI. Now, I just picked one that had a pretty reddish tone that um, won't completely color our characters the way I want them to, but it's going to give us a pretty good start. So what I'm going to do now is export all of these images separately as PNGs, and I'm going to take them back over to Photoshop. So I'm laying out all the characters now, just making sure they're in the right order and I'm going to start doing a rough composite, basically just masking everything off, using my original poster as reference. And now once I've done that, I'm just going to go through and color correct all of the characters so that they match what they look like in the original poster. I also add a little bit of light onto the train, and these colors won't stay the same throughout the whole poster once we do um, the effects on each character, we're probably going to go back and tweak some of them. So now that I've done that, we can move on and we're going to apply all the effects. So I only really needed to do it to one character and I used Indie. So I'm using a mix of filter galleries, pastel uh, filters, the oil paint filter. And then I also used the, some pixelate filters like, uh, crystallized filter to give it the effect of brush strokes. I also blurred it a little and then I ended up with um, one more effect which was the find edges which just makes it look like it has a bit of a pencil drawn outline. 
So now that I've finished Indie Up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt click on all of these effects and I can just drag it over to another character. So now what I'm going to do is you can see it applied it to Voller. I'm just going to go through and copy all of these effects over to my other characters. And you can see it drastically changed the color on some of them, so I'm just going to go back and fix up the color on those. So now that I've done that, you can see in some of these layers I have kind of some blending coming in from ones behind it. That's because I lowered the opacity of the characters to help make them look more blended into the actual poster background. It just brings in some of the texture. So what I'll do is I'll go through and just uh, fix all of those uh, so they aren't bleeding through. And then on a couple of these characters, they had some uh, outer glow highlights. But other than that, I think we're done. Well, guys, there you have it. That's a pretty rough and quick tutorial on how I made all of these posters. Um, I personally really like this one. I like how different it is from the other ones. The other ones only really had one to three or four characters. This one had 14, uh, 15 if you count the train as well. Um, but I feel like I was able to capture most of the details and did a pretty good job of replicating the art style with this one. It's not perfect, but it does its job. Now, I'm not a master at Photoshop, but I've been learning for a while and I learned just through uh, experimenting and each one of these posters experimented a lot. Now you can actually download any one of these. I have a Google Drive link right in the description. So if you want to get these with or without the logos, I'll have a link that you can click on and take you there. But other than that, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun and I'll see you in the next video.